All right, this means that I can roam around, and that's exciting. All right. Now talk quietly. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to get started. So, Danny, this is Danny Blau from AndyMark. He is pressing buttons for me. Let's Both. give Danny a round of applause. Button, please. Hi. So if there's a team and they're looking for $25, how can you collect $25? Button. Well, you could ask for it. So who's interested in having $25? All right, so come forward. Who wants $25? No, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Who wants $25? Here we go. You were first. OK, that's instructions for how you can get $25 from me in a check. OK, so $25. You, you can ask people. And normally, people are like, oh, yeah, I have $25 that I can give you. I don't need to buy new shoes. I can hand you $25. This is a lesson. It has instructions for how to get a check from me. I don't know if Danny knows about that. That's OK. All right, what about $400? <laughs> Well, you could run uh, a build your own robot event where you bring students in and you have them go through a summer camp type activity. Um, and you, you know, you could be like 11 and one. Yeah. 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 Hey guys. Hey, Shh. all done. Go sit down that way. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. I'll call you up when you're ready. All right, so you could do a build your own robot event, and there are instructions for that on the first website on, under the fundraising toolkit. Now, what if you're looking for more money than that? What if you're looking you know, um, for $4,000? Well, you could run a flocking fundraiser uh, where a team went out, go to the next slide, and they actually took flamingos and they stuck it in people's yards. And in order for you to get the flingo flamingos removed, you had to pay them money and then send it along to someone else's yard. So you got to fundraise through revenge. <laughs> but it takes a lot of coordination. It takes flyers. It takes people driving around. Can your kids drive? These are all things to consider when running this fundraiser. And that's a lot of questions. What if you're looking for $15,000? Well. You could run 1511's patron book, which takes quite a bit of time and session. Next slide. Thank you. Which takes quite a, little, uh, a lot of organization. It takes time building up those connections with your local community. Um, but teams have raised $15,000 by doing things like this, like this fundraising activity. And so and you do cold calling, and you have to put all these pieces together. But here's the big question. How can you? put this to work in your city with the people you have in your community and how your team is organized. Well, that's what we're going to work on today. So uh, the fundraising toolkit, I don't what, what'd you do? So the fundraising toolkit was created uh, using a grant from the Argosy Foundation. And the focus was uh, for first teams to be able to learn how to fundraise and be sustainable within their own communities. So we spent a lot of time working through different sections of how the fundraising toolkit worked. So we went all the way from starting with, what is your team all about? How do you make a business plan? What benefits does your team have that you can bring into your community? to looking at what is actually in your community. Are you in a rural area, an urban area, a suburban area? What companies could you be approaching with the, these connections? Who is in your network? To the documentation you actually hand to sponsors, to training the students on how to organize a presentation, and then all the other extra fun, exciting things like maintaining sponsor relations by saying thank you at the end of a season, which is something that actually a lot of teams forget to do and is really important for that reoccurring sponsorship. So we basically broke down fundraising into all these different sections and started gathering resources in these different areas. But we're really only going to focus on the first four sections today because, and this is very interactive, so if you have pen and paper, that's great. If you have your phone and you're checking email, everyone else can take out their phone and start taking notes, so then it'll be disguised. So there we go. Um, but the point of this is for you to leave it's for you to leave with action items. It's for you to walk out of here and feel like you can go back to your community and go make a difference and start right away. And it's really interactive. So get ready. All right, let's go. So uh, first of all, I do have a worksheet. 
And instead of printing out like 100 copies, which I could have because there weren't many people in this room, not like last time, um, I put the, the uh, copy on the Indiana First website under my team resource page so that you could actually play along as you're going. However, I also formatted a presentation this time to make sure that you can write this down in your notes or do this on your phone or have a conversation with me as you go along. So this is all actually posted on the Indiana First website under team resources, if that helps. All right, next slide. So who are you? This is your organizational sum uh, summary. There are some people in this room who can tell me their organizational mission statement and things like that right off the cuff of their head. So I need a volunteer. Nikki? Okay, what's your mission statement? What's your, what's your organization all about, your summary? All right, so college organization, mentoring, volunteer outreach. So that does a pretty good job at summarizing what the organization's all about. All right, any team volunteer? Don't be shy. Come on, let's go. Yes. What is your mission statement? A summary of your team, like one sentence. We strive to improve community development by creating innovative problem solvers through collaborative outreach in first education, community service, and STEM. Wow, I caught collaborative outreach, community engagement, education, STEM. That was really good. Where are you from? Columbus, Metro Box. Excellent. All right. Yes. What is your organization summary? Providing high school students with hands-on opportunities in the STEM field to better prepare them for uh, careers in STEM field while also outreaching to our community and inspiring them to make the follow path to career So hands-on, career, community, outreach. Excellent. Very good. So this is important. You need to know who you are so you can tell other people who you are. And this will come in handy when we actually teach students how to present. But step one, know who you are. Know the summary of your organization. So next slide. All right. Now this is where if you have a team business plan and you have already done the SWOT analysis, which is strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats, that's awesome. However, if you're going back to your community and you're teaching these kids, new kids, freshmen, under, you know, classmen, how to do fundraising, they don't know this. So this is the fun part where you can go in to them and be really excited and do this exact presentation and steal all these slides and work with these kids through these same questions. So what are your strengths internal to the organization? Give me examples of what strengths your teams have. Yes. What is it? Member size. Member size, so maybe a lot of team members. Dedicated yes. Mentors. Dedicated mentors, absolutely. Passionate students. Passionate students, yes. Outreach to girls, wonderful. Hands-on experience. Hands-on experience, great, yes. Mentoring first teams in the community. Mentoring other first teams in the community. Great example of strengths. Let's take a look at weaknesses. So, internal to the organization, what are some weaknesses, and actually, I hate saying weaknesses, uh, areas of improvement, but saying areas of improvement doesn't fit into SWAT very well. So, what are areas of improvement for your team? Amount of mentors. Amount of mentors. So, maybe you're recruiting more, or a diverse, Range of mentors, yes. Everyone has areas they can improve. You're not perfect. Yes. Team size. Team size. So maybe recruiting more people or recruiting students who are on the uh, engineering side or the programming side or even the marketing side of the team. Yes. Parent involvement. Yeah, and parent involvement. That is absolutely an area that's a very strong challenge for teams. Yes. Communication and clarity of communication. Communication, yeah. Just communication, actually, very consistently, is an area of weakness for a team. Okay, let's go to the next area. So now we're talking about opportunities. And so when you do a SWOT analysis, your strengths and weaknesses are typically internal to the organization, and your opportunities and threats are external. And so we're looking at opportunities that you could leverage that aren't necessarily related to the specific individual team, but are related to your community. So start thinking here. What are some opportunities where you could go home and you can leverage that you haven't currently? Yes. Starting a, team. Starting a middle school team. Yes, if you don't have a middle school team, that is absolutely an opportunity to start one. More opportunities that you have. Think through ideas. Yes. Judging at science fairs. That sounds like you could do some recruitment with that. Yes. District expansion. What does that mean? So recruiting more, so recruiting more students outside of just your inner school, recruiting more teams to the local area. 
get, getting the first name out there. Awesome. Okay, and then let's look at threats. So these are always fun because these are things like weather, which I'm sure you can come up with a couple fun examples, you know? Who builds in January? Lots of people. What happens in January? It snows. Okay, other threats to your organization. Yes. Buses breaking down. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, I have stories about that later. Yes, buses breaking down, very dangerous. Yes. Space to work. Sometimes teams only have a closet, and that's awful. Sometimes spaces are no longer there that used to be there. And yes, that is something that you need to be prepared and ready to work through. Yes. Too many teams. Yes. So um, something about density. Density of first in your area can sometimes be. It is a good problem, but it is also. It can also be seen as a threat. So how do you overcome that and look for external opportunities? Okay. So we're going to keep going. So. We have created our SWOT analysis. You have talked, you have gone back to your team and you have talked to your students about what our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are, right? Yay, excitement. So now we're going to talk about our wish list. This is the fun part. So this is the part where you get to sit there and you get to say, what do I want and what does my team need from the community? What does is, what is your team need? What's on your wish list? What do you wish your team had? So it's almost like your wish list is like a connection with your media outlets. So a media outlet connection. So wish list, let's do wish list with uh, physical items. So yes, wish list. A year round field setup, that's a good wish list item, yes. Money, physical items, but you know, money is physical, I guess, yes. Yes, role descriptions, that's a good thing. But wish list, I'm talking like, who wants a CNC machine? Who wants two CNC machines? This is what goes in a wish list. So, what else? Yes. Oh, a Stratus 3D printer. They can do the like leg femur, the bone thing. That's really, it's very impressive. Um, yes, what's on your wish list? New hand tools. Fantastic. What's on your wish list? Dedicated and secure space. Ah, dedicated and secure. That's a very important piece, that secure part. Yes, what's on your wish list? Different practice robot. Hey, the one I got you guys is really good. Just kidding. Okay, um, what about over here? Do you want new cameras? Do you want AV equipment? Do you want more computers? Look at, I see someone saying yes back there. Exactly, a DSLR for a team, absolutely. So these are things that go on your wish list, okay? And so I hope that you have your phone out and either you're emailing, but maybe not, maybe you're actually taking notes and that's okay. And so make your wish list, always have your wish list because sometimes people can't give you money but they can give you things. So, you know what, what uh, people can also give? Time. So let's talk about mentor support. What mentor support does your team need? And what is the description of what you need them to do? Saying, oh, I could use someone to work on the marketing side of the team. That's kind of vague. Saying, oh, I need someone who can write press releases and teach our students to write press releases. That's a lot more specific, and that sounds like what you're looking for right there. So, what kind of mentors are you looking for? What roles do you need filled? Are you looking for a computer engineer who can teach your kids not only LabVIEW, not only C++, but Java too? I almost forgot the third one, that was a little rough there. So, what roles do you need? Yes? CAD mentor. A CAD mentor. Are you, are you volunteering? Okay. <laughs> yes? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, and and you know that a lot of the uh, mentor resources on the first website are really good for kind of some of those pieces. But having that person that can do that teaching aspect is really helpful. So maybe recruiting a, t a teacher that teaches other teachers would be an opportunity to kind of learn those tips and tricks. Uh, train the trainer type of model. So, yes, what roles and mentors are you looking for? That sounds like a great person to get and like have them come to this presentation and like use these resources. So that sounds like a great idea, yes. Electrical mentor, right, because you don't want things blowing up on the field. It isn't good. All right, not that that's happened. So. 
these are all great pieces. And so when, when you're learning about your team and you're learning what your team needs, that's step one. And if you look on the uh, really fun worksheet that I put on the Indiana First website yesterday when I was like, I don't want to print out 100 copies of these because we can save trees. Um, this is page one. So if you look at page two, this is where you start expanding into your network and analyzing your community. So how can you leverage your network? Um, who are two contacts that you can go back after this event and ask them for support? And there is a really good first fundraising toolkit resource. It's a video about creating a resource map. And I highly recommend you look at it. But since I'm in front of you and I'm a real person and I don't think we should use videos in our chairman's presentations, I didn't want to show you that video. There's a different video I'm showing you though, but that's because it's really good. So uh, who are two contacts that you can go home and ask who are in your network? Think through your parents, think through different contacts. Who isn't currently involved with your team that should be involved? Yes. Your school district, uh, like superintendent maybe? Bam, so you're writing down, I'm gonna go reach out to my superintendent and tell them I went to the world championship and was awesome, right? Cool, if you're writing that down, that's great. Yes, other ideas. Who's someone else that you can go back to and reach out to about the team, either through education or to ask for support? Yes. Community colleges. Community colleges. Yes, absolutely. That's a great example. What about you? Do you have an idea? Who's someone you could go ask? Principal. principal. Good idea. That sounds great. Is your principal here? They should be. <laughs> but next year. Next year. That's okay. All right, so leverage your network. So we have, as everyone written down, two people that you can go reach out to when you get back to the community that you can talk to about this. No, that's okay, but then what you should do is when you're presenting this to your students, make sure they're writing this down in their worksheet. Okay. So who isn't involved with the organization? Let's talk about restaurants. I heard someone talking earlier uh, about pizza donations. Man, who doesn't love pizza? every single Saturday of pelt season. <laughs> so let's think about restaurants. Maybe some diversity in the uh, food offerings might be helpful. So what are some restaurants in your local area that you could appro approach about food? Yes. Tim Hortons. Yes, absolutely. Very important. Chick-fil-A. That is absolutely an opportunity. Other ideas on restaurants that you could reach out to? Think about your location. Grocery stores, yes, that sounds like a great idea. Very cool. So these are all different organizations you can look at. Um, you could also check out community foundations, large companies. Um, there is information on the first fundraising toolkit about how you can go to Google and you can search nearby me and look for software and then software companies pop up. And that's how I actually make a list of all the different databases. So if you're looking for more resources, section two of the fundraising toolkit, your community analysis is actually really cool and has a lot of good information if you don't mind reading a two-page PDF with a link. Cool, next. Okay, documentation. So this is where if you're going to make sure your students are successful, you want them to walk out of this session you're doing with them with the documentation they need to explain to, to leave with someone so that it explains how you can actually give a donation to your team. Because if you're going into a sponsor presentation and they don't know how to give you a check, that is really hard. So like that's why I wrote what questions I need answered on that piece of paper, which included things like what do I put in the memo line to make sure that this money doesn't go to the school, it goes to the robotics team. Who do I need to address the check to and who do I mail it so it actually arrives on time? All important questions, but what are the benefits of your program? So, uh, silver level sponsorship, nuts and bolts backer, uh, platinum level sponsor. Tell me an example, looking at your different benefits that you provide as part of your team, of what a certain level sponsor gives to your team. What, what, yes? Logo on, the Logo on the website. And what level donation do they have to give to make that? Uh, gold. What's gold mean? There you go, good job. That was pretty impressive. So $500 to $1,000 gold level sponsor gets a logo on their website. Great example. Yes. So you come in, you bring your robot and do robot demonstrations. What level sponsor? 5,000 and above a platinum sponsor gets robot demonstrations, awesome. Yes. 500 and above means name on the robot. What size font? 
<laughs> it depends on the robot. So recognition adjusted according to donation level. That's always a good little asterisk to put in at the bottom. All right, so this is, this is a good example. So with benefits of your program, make sure your students know what these benefits are because if they're going to the community and they're saying, hey, what do I get for supporting you? The um look and the terror look, you yeah, know, no good. Let's, get, let's send these kids out and have them be confident. Okay, so, and also looking, answer, answer some questions about your program. How many students are in your program? Yes, 80 students are in your program. How many mentors are in your program? 20 mentors, awesome. Uh, how many mentor hours have been donated to the team? 20 times, 10 times, you know, it's more like 40 or 60 or, you know, too many hours. But you can, you can total these numbers and say, these adults and these professionals are giving this time to our team because they understand that it's changing our culture and changing kids' lives. And when you go to these other companies, that means something. What's the annual cost to run the program? 85K. Yes. 50, 60K, yep, absolutely, yes. 48,000, so do, do you know, do your students know what it costs to run the program? Every once in a while, I'll run into teams who are like, I don't wanna tell my student what, what it costs to run the program, because I want them to focus on the, the, the experience they're having. That's okay, but when they graduate, they don't know how to fundraise. And so my recommendation is teach them all of the skills you can now, not necessarily looking at them as a student, but looking at them as a future first participant, because it's first for life. And so how can we give them skills to succeed that way? All right, and then finally, what is your impact? So how have you uh, made an impact on students? What percentage of your kids are going on into STEM careers? Yes, 87%, 87%. excellent, yes. 100%, good job. So 51, 23, how many seniors have graduated? 20, awesome, that's a great percentage. Okay, so what is your impact? Show, show that the kids in this program are actually moving on into careers that the companies and the organizations that you're asking for support from are you know, looking for kids to hire on and bring on board. That's important, so know you, what your impact is and make sure your students understand what the impact is on your community, because they don't know, and that's okay, but we can teach them that. All right, so let's click on this YouTube link. So this is Simon Sinek's uh, presentation. Actually, exit out of that YouTube and go to the uh, YouTube, yep. No, that's not right either. All wrong, go to Chrome. Skip it. Okay, so normally I'm like, oh, I shouldn't put a video in the middle of a presentation, but Simon Sinek is awesome and he has this great little thing that he goes through and I felt like I couldn't copy it, so I wanted to show you what he has to say about uh, explaining to people why you do something versus what you do. Let me give you an example. I use Apple because they're easy to understand and everybody gets it. If Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might sound like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. Want to buy one? Meh. And that's how most of us communicate. That's how most marketing is done, that's how most sales is done, and that's how most of us communicate interpersonally. We say what we do, we say how we're different or how we're better, and we expect some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, something like that. Here's our new law firm. Uh, we have the best lawyers with the biggest clients. We have, you know, we always perform for our clients, do business with us. Here's our new car. It gets great gas mileage. It has, you know, leather seats. Buy our car. But it's uninspiring. Here's how Apple actually communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You're ready to buy a computer from me. All I did was reverse the order of the information. People don't buy what you do, people buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. This explains why every single... So, going back to the presentation. Uh-oh. <laughs> people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. 
So this little circle here, this is, this is something to teach students. This little circle here, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So why we do first. We're changing popular culture. We are changing the culture of the world to focus our students to focus and change the perception of culture around science and technology. We happen to be building robots. So we need to focus on the why. The, the, this is the, we are doing, so people believe, so people don't buy what you do, but why you do it. So let's focus on the culture aspect of it. I highly recommend listening to all of Simon Sinek's presentation because it is an actual excellent piece of the, the presentation and the puzzle. And sometimes I really struggle with actually putting into words the why versus the how versus the what. Because it's not easy to do. Because if it was easy, everyone would be like Apple, and then no one would be like Apple, and then there you go. But so the why about this program is the culture aspect of it. It's the fact that we are changing how people think. Yes. We believe in changing the culture through to, to one where science and technology is celebrated like sports and celebrities. We do this through mentorship and community engagement. We happen to build robots. We can give them a round of applause for that. That was pretty good. <laughs> All right. So, so far we've kind of gone through. We have a worksheet that your kids can work on. We have a video that your kids can watch. And we need to understand what goes into a business plan. That's kind of what we've done so far. Now, here's the really fun part. So I have a first student, uh -huh, cough, cough and quotey fingers. Um, a first student is going to come in and we're going to talk about how you guys can make it exciting for your kids to learn how to talk to people. Um, so in the front row here, I have an organization. Uh, so everyone, every single person in this room is actually a shareholder of a company that is called? Indica Incorporated. What is it? Indica, because India is an island in the Indian Ocean. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> So Indica Incorporated is a company that you are all shareholders of. These five young people, approximately, and there might be a couple more than five, um, are all on the board of directors. And there is a first student who is coming in to do a presentation on them. And so what I would like all of the students and the adults in the room is to sit back, watch this presentation, and maybe think of some ways that this presentation could go better. So Evan, can you come up and do a presentation, please? Sorry, well, what was your name again? My name is Jacob Fox, oh. and I am here with the rest of my board of directors here. Can I, can I just call you, can I, can I have a nickname for you? Um, <laughs> you can call, just call me Fox. Fox? Fox, F -O -X. Have you heard that song? What is it on? What does the fox say? Every day of my life, somebody tells me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So Fox, yes. you, you've heard the song, right? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> just, just check it. I'm sorry, what's FIRST? What does FIRST do? What, first? Is, what is your guys' mission? Uh, so <laughs> this is actually a joke on our team. I really laugh about this all the time. We, uh, we say that FIRST stands for uh, FIRST in Researching Sanitary Toilets. <laughs> yep. OK, so is, is that what FIRST is about? As far as I know, I don't know. I always I go to these meetings, man, and there's like these robot parts, but I see them out and doing the pizza, and I just make a beeline. Well, I mean, I use like a saw sometimes and I cut parts, so it's, it's like destroying robots, right? <laughs> okay. um, what does FIRST stand for? Uh, that's, that, that's our joke, don't you remember it? 
Yes, I do. First, first in researching sanitary toilets, man. Come on, listen to what I'm saying, dude. I'm listening. Come on, Fox. I, I have, I have higher standards here. If you're presenting to a company and you're wanting us to like invest and give you money, is it really for sanitary toilets? <laughs> I don't know. What does the Fox say? Because what does first stand for? I told you, man. <laughs> First in researching sanitary toilets. Come on, get with the program, dude. Through the program, this um, first in researching sanitary toilets, what have you learned? I don't know, let me Google that. Wait, wait, it's, it's loading, okay. Um, apparently I've learned some resources to enhance your instruction. Um, there's some brainy quotes here as well. I could go through those if you'd like me to. Oh. Uh, why, why should we support your team? Because we are students in high school and we need more Mountain Dew. Uh, the team just is out of Mountain Dew. We need to go purchase more. And if you, if you would be so kind, is we need some pizza too. That, that's really what runs our team. All right, board of directors, would you give the student uh, any donation for their robotics team? Yeah. Probably not. Probably not. I gave him like five minutes of my time to know about it. So, Evan, how do you feel about that? Man, I thought we had a connection, Fox. <laughs> Come on. A little bit. <laughs> All right, okay, so let's have a conversation about uh, how this could have definitely, absolutely, 100% have been better. So, examples. Yes. Being knowledgeable about first, so not coming in and thinking that first stands for sanitary toilets, something, something, something. Yes, no. Right, so take it seriously, dress professionally, absolutely, yes? Yes, do your research ahead of time so you don't walk in and not know these people's names, yes? Don't be on your phone. Respect the professional people, yes. So being confident, being like being smooth in terms of what you're saying, actually maybe having practiced it ahead of time. Yep, absolutely, all good points. Yes. So thanking for their time, actually introducing yourself so that they don't have to awkwardly start when they don't actually know what's going on. Yes. Yep, don't interrupt them. Absolutely. Yes, stand, don't sit. So, um, if you didn't notice, this was all a, a point to get everyone kind of laughing and to make them realize what a bad presentation looks like and then to have a discussion around it. So my recommendation is, because you have students on the team who are their peers, find an adult who doesn't mind making a fool of themselves. And so when I do this, when I come into events, because I don't have Evan with me, to actually do his like awesome spiel. Normally he also eats chips, his phone interrupts everything. Um, and then he has a flamingo hat on. So, but it, it, the flamingo hat didn't fit in his suitcase. So, um, but those are all things that I typically add. And I wear a floppy hat and sweatpants. And then I walk in and I do this awful presentation. And then I sit there and have them tell me how it could have been better. And then normally I walk along and I do a good presentation as a, a comparison. But the whole point of the bad presentation is because then it gives them a baseline and it makes them laugh. So when I run this with a robotics team, we will give the example bad presentation, we will give the good presentation, we'll have the packet that the students made and we'll make sure they all have their packets, we'll bring parents in because it says it's part of parent recruitment or all their adults, et cetera, and we will have the students work in groups and practice presenting to the different parents who, are, who represent companies. And so this is a way that we get the students 
feeling a lot more comfortable in how to do a presentation. Because you can, you can help them coordinate, you can make your database of sponsors, uh, you can give them you know, the packet and you can make sure they're comf comfortable with the presentation. And if you've done all of that and then you say, okay, and you actually get them to the venue and you have them go in, they should succeed. Or at least they shouldn't fall flat on their face and feel very uncomfortable. And that's the whole point of this program is because now they can communicate. And when I say they succeed, I don't necessarily mean they're getting money. I just mean they, they actually feel like they can do it. So let's give our students the tools they need and always remember, just think, what would Evan do in this situation? And how can we make sure this is fun? So that's, when we were talking earlier, sir, that is my recommendation for how you can make presenting fun and you can train the students that way. So cool, all right, so next. So, um, other pieces of the fundraising toolkit. So if you click on the link, sir, to the fundraising toolkit, there are phone and email scripts. So you know how we were talking about like actually setting up the presentation? There are examples here, if you scroll down to section four, there is a lot of resources. So there are email and phone script examples. If you click on the 2177 email and phone script, yep, right there. So if you click on this one, this actually has this really cool thing that explains, oh, hey, here's the initial call. Well, if this person is here, you can say this. If they're not here, you can say this. If it's yes, then you should stop by, you can say this. And if it's yes, I have time now to talk to you, you can go into this whole spiel. If they're not there to connect, get their contact information and continue on from there. Follow up calls. So I mean, step by step, step by step instructions here. So let's go back to the main page. So then my other fun one is, where is it? Where is that? that? What's your team number? Go to 4140's uh, packet. Yes. This one. So they have an initial phone call list too. What you can start, the follow up phone call list, keep scrolling. And the answer. Remember to say thank you for all of the time that they commit to this program. Okay, go back. All right, so you can see, I mean, there's a lot of different examples. There are sponsor letter, letter handouts, go to 1511 sponsor, or the patron letter. Nope, nope, two up, two up, there you go. So, a wonderful letter explaining about the patron, uh, the patron letter uh, donation. So that was the $15,000 one that 1511 has created and has worked on for multiple years. That gets them a bunch of money, except they have put a lot of time and a lot of effort into it, and that's why it takes that time. But here's an example for how they put together their letter and explain that process. So, all right, let's go back to the presentation. So there are examples here. There are wonderful resources that you can look through. And you can look at this and say, well, this might work for my team, or this doesn't work for my team. And you can pick and pull and choose and, and do whatever you need to do um, to make sure that it's your own. But I wanted to give you as, as many ex examples as possible because you never know where you're working with or what you're doing or how this is gonna work for your team. So that's why those resources are there. We also have some training videos, um, not only the videos that first created, but we have a video where if you don't have a mentor that feels comfortable doing a bad presentation, uh, we had Rush, Team se uh, 27, put together a presentation about how, um, what a bad presentation looks like and then what a good one looks like. And so that's also linked on the website as well. All right, let's go to section five. So thanking your sponsors, these are some, there are examples on the website on different ways you can thank your sponsors. And so if you look over here, um, 3176, they're actually at this event, very exciting, from Indiana. Um, they created, uh, took pictures of every single student on the team in groups, then did Photoshop, put all their students together in a line, and then signed it and said thank you so much for your support, and they framed it. And so that's one example. Another team, they put together a thank you video that they put on YouTube, and they sent to their sponsor as well. And then even another team, um, the one on the end there, 234, who's also at this event, actually, um, they put together this poster that has all of their different sponsors and then information about their awards over the years, a picture of their team, and they gave it to uh, their sponsors. And you can actually go to dentist offices in like south, the south side of Indianapolis and see this poster in their stores. So that's kind of a cool little opportunity there. So these are all examples on how you can thank your sponsors. But you know, even an email thank you, that's kind of the first step. But even an email thank you is an important piece of that. And what's even better is getting the kids in front of them and getting the kids to say thank you and to interact with them and show them the robot. All right, let's go to the next slide. So 
In addition to all of this awesome stuff about fundraising, there is also information about starting 501c3s, the pros, the cons, and the alternatives as well. And so um, a lot of teens ask about, you know, how can I start my own 501c3? Um, it takes forever for my school to give me money. Yeah, I understand that. Um, you know, it's hard to get reimbursed. You know, so we have uh, different examples that came from Mo, who has put in together, you know, the first state robotics incorporated. Um, that's their 501c3, and they have a great step-by-step -step process and information about what they went through to do that. Uh, we did a uh, training and interview session with Meredith Novak, who not only put together Bomb Squad's nonprofit, she also worked with the um, Ar uh, Arkansas First nonprofit as well. And so she she does reference um, something about like doing some of the forms is like taking a band out of the face. And so I was just kind of like, let's not really mention that all the time. But she, what she said was, you just work through it. And if the IRS contacts you, you just work through it. So. Don't, you don't need to be nervous about it. You don't need to be afraid of it. It's just something that you have to look at this challenge and not look at it as a problem, but as an opportunity to learn. And then we also have information about running a booster club. So uh, 2220, they actually work with booster club, I think USA. Um, and so this was a way for them to become like a subsection of a nonprofit. Um, and it, it had, there are pros and cons to doing that. And so looking at some of this information, if you're trying to consider some of that nonprofit aspect, is not legal advice, but uh, gives you some examples to take a look at. Next. Okay. So then we have section seven, which is alternative methods of fundraising, because sometimes, you know, just kind of doing the cold calling and going, doing the process of presentations doesn't always work um, or necessarily mean that you should only do that. So you can look at doing uh, grants. So, for example, there are some organizations where uh, if you work for a company and your mentor volunteers with them, you can submit for, you know, maybe $1,000 through a, a volunteer award where they, they give money to your team because your mentors have been engaged. Um, there's information about grants that you can look at. STEMgrants.com is a great website. Uh, there's even a presentation that's going on next door, actually, um, that is focused on grants, and so that could be something to take a look at as well. And then we also did a, uh, another session focused with the team grant coordinators for first headquarters, focused on what type of grant opportunities teams can be looking for as well. And so I definitely recommend checking that out. They also have information about uh, crowdfunding sites. And so um, EDCO is an example of a crowdfunding site uh, where they, they take a smaller percentage than I've typically seen, so I actually normally recommend looking at EDCO. Um, but it's a handy way for teams to be able to fundraise where if you don't normally have ways where you can have supporters or parents give donations with a credit card, crowdfunding is actually a really nice way because then instead of writing checks or having to go through that grant process and having the schools, you know, information get transferred over so that you can do a direct deposit into the school account and all that crazy stuff, um, some of these crowdfunding sites are really nice. You can also look at uh, Kickstarter, but the, pro the, the thing about Kickstarter is that you have to actually fundraise your total goal before you get anything. And they also take a certain percentage for managing the website and things like that that you have to look into. And then GoFundMe is nice because no matter what you raise, you can collect it back for the team. So even if you don't hit your goal, you can collect that, that fund. Um, but at the same time, they also take a certain percentage. And so it's important to research you know, what you need and what you're looking for um, before you go into any of these different methods. So, um, so yeah, so we kind of have a little review and some tips about how teams can set up their crowdfunding pieces. Um, but I, I would say currently my recommendation is go take a look at what EDCO is doing. Um, and then after that, you take a look at GoFundMe. And then we have fundraising examples. And so this is where at the beginning I was like, here are all these examples of fundraisers that teams have done, but how do you know that this actually works for you and you don't? Um, and so what I made, I had all these teams who were submitting their different fundraising pieces into, um, you know, me as I was working on this. I basically had them fill out a form that said, how many students does it take to do this? How much time does it take to do this? How many adults does this take? Um, what is the, you know, like, how, what is the time frame for getting this done? And so they filled out this um, form that kind of explains all those different pieces. So you could go anywhere from doing, like, an open house in your local community, and if you're in the suburbs and you're in an affluent community, your open house might actually be really successful. Um, but, you know, if you do an open house in a you know, two blocks or five blocks that way in St. Louis, that might not be as successful. Um, there's also a kitchen tour that a team does, and they coordinate and do a lot of work. They bake cookies inside the house, and 
um, they do a kitchen tour where they show different kitchens. And that's great for people who are actually looking at building kitchens and need examples, which are not normally your high school demographics. And so maybe you need more adult support with that one. Um, there's information about the RoboCamps that uh, 3132 has done before, which they've just won the Chairman's Award, so congratulations to them from the Houston event. Very exciting. Um, but so I've, I've seen their information on the RoboCamps, and that's a great fundraiser for their team, and it also helps with recruitment. And it's kind of like this uh, fulfilling cycle that kind of goes through with those different pieces. And so I highly recommend RoboCamps as an opportunity for your team to not only raise money, but also recruit more kids to get involved with the program. And it does take some time to build up your base of having the proper equipment, to do training with all the students. But once you've got that base going and you make that first investment, you can really raise funds from doing that process. Oh, and then this last one down here is a murder mystery dinner, which is pretty cool. But it also takes, you know, students who don't mind getting out there and, you know, presenting in front of this large group of people who are also eating spaghetti dinner. Um, and so that's the one to kind of take a look at, too. But these are all examples and best practices on how to run these different pieces that are available on the fundraising toolkit webpage. So now what do you do? So check out the first fundraising toolkit on the first website. And then go back to review all the resources, take a look at everything, make your students review it with you, teach your teams, imagine what would Evan do in his bad presentation, you know, how, how can you channel your inner Evan, um, and you know, go from there. And then if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us or tweet us or email us or talk to me after this and kind of go from there. Uh, on the Indiana First website, we are also posting this because Nikki is doing a great job at recording all this, so thanks, Nikki. Um, so we'll have a video of it as well on the Indiana Robotics YouTube channel, and it looks like headquarters re is recording it too. So that's great news. But I'm happy to help and answer any questions that anyone has. So thank you so much for being here today. Questions? Sorry. Yes. Hey, Danny, can you go to the first website, please? So um, on the first website, or at least on the old first website, are we still recording? Maybe we should stop recording. OK. Uh, so on, on the current first website, um, if you go to firstinspires.org, um, and go to the search bar, um, and go to press releases, so typically, First Headquarters has a place where they post their press releases. Um, and in that press release, there's a bl blurb about the FIRST program at the, the very bottom. Um, and so that typically is a good place to kind of start. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so take the FIRST press release, take the information at the bottom, tweak it to add your team information, and then go into your local community and um, gather all the information from their websites about who you send your press releases to, because there's normally a contact page that has that email address. And then that's who you can start emailing. Um, and as you make a list and as you create all of your press releases, just do a template, um, kind of using some of this first information, using your own team information that you create, and then adding in those quotes from the students and those pictures from your events. And then every event that you do, just throw in this press release out to that list of the media contacts that you've created. And so that's my recommendation for in the local area. Like, start with what FIRST has, but then make it better by making it local, adding those students' quote, adding those photos, and then send it to your local resources. But you have to do some legwork on the ground first for that. Does that make sense? Sure. Sure. So um, I would definitely say that direct messaging first on Twitter is a great way to kind of ask them that. Um, so that's kind of my next recommendation. So yes, Aaron. Got 
Got it. So that might be good to kind of tack on to the bottom as some of those opportunities. Um, You can also call headquarters at 603-666-3906, which I also have memorized, which is kind of sad. Um, and then extension 494 is Haley Dunn, who's the media contact for First Headquarters. And so they're a great person to really reach out to and ask some of those more top-down questions that you had. Um, yes? Did you go over how we got to this page? I, I don't know how we got to this page. <laughs> oh, look it. There's actually a press room under about us. There you go. Cool. Oh, and then there's press thought. Oh, look at that. First kicks off world's largest celebration of science, technology, engineering, and math for students. Very cool. They also have branding standard information and a newsletter. Yeah. And, if, and uh, Kathy Kenfield did a presentation just before this, and at the end she was talking about how even if you just send them your press release and your little information, if they have a filler spot in their newspaper, like, they'll fill that with robotics information. Like, that's really cool. Um, and so this goes back to, like, recruiting a mentor. Like, this is this child over here from Canada with the hat. Yes, you recruiting, recruiting a mentor um, to help work on press releases because that would be really helpful with some of those aspects. So, and that's something you can talk to companies about, too. Any other questions about the fundraising toolkit? Yeah, no, thank you. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, see you later. I'll stand up here. I, we should probably connect about me sending you your check. So, thank you. <laughs>